guys, let's get into this Dino Fury review because we're going to be tackling episode number 13 for you guys today titled The Matchmaker. Now, remember, guys, before we get into this, these are just simply my A-plus opinions. At the end of the day, though, I want to go ahead and know yours. So let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below. And we'll definitely go ahead and get to your guys's comments um after i go ahead and break this episode down we got blossom in the house also thank you very much for coming through and jared as well so thank you very much guys as always but um episode 13 of dino fury the matchmaker i think is one that we were really anticipating for quite some time ever since we wind up getting the episode descriptions uh, a while back i remember even simon bennett mentioning the idea that for him episode 13 this season was certainly one of his favorites and after watching the episode itself, um, I definitely, definitely agree with him. Um, Datilla says, I have to say, as a woman, when I have a crush on someone, I do what Izzy does. Uh, Izzy did. I do my makeup, my hair, and wear my nice perfume. Uh, and that's something that definitely Javi picked up on also. The idea that, listen, somebody's got you in a good mood. You're feeling pretty confident, right? You want to impress a little bit. Maybe you take an additional shower, people, right? Um, get your hygiene gene in check, um, do your hair, start smelling nice, right? Trying to grab somebody's eye, somebody's attention. Um, and she, it definitely worked in here to certainly say the least. Um, but clearly Javi being the, the brother in here clearly is just missing and misreading all the signs, if you will. <clears throat> So I thought it was pretty interesting. But for me, I really enjoyed this episode. I truly did. I thought it had a little bit of everything. Some great original footage in here for sure. Some great humor that actually had me chuckling and laughing from time to time. Some fantastic sort of like uh, awkward cringe moments that are meant to be like funny. Um, I thought actually were pulled off extremely well in here. I, I really do enjoy Tessa Rao as an actor. I, I remember recalling her sizzle reel when she was announced as um uh as an actor in dino fear i remember going back and doing some research on her seeing some of the stuff that she's done and she does have great sort of comedic timing putting herself in really awkward positions and trying to like fumble through things um so i almost felt like this was right up tessa Rao's alley in regards to just performance like just seeing um our adrian in this episode like pulling out the gigantic scroll of a poem and things like that and just the awkwardness um that um that izzy was certainly feeling being in public with all those people trying to figure out what's going on trying to get adrian to stop and things like that I love the the comedic timing and just the facial expressions that Tessa Rao certainly brings to the game. So I thought she did a really great job in here um, as Izzy. And, and honestly, <clears throat> I really thought that they handled this episode extremely well. Um, I, I truly did. It is one of those things where I love the fact that they truly do not make that big of a deal out of the situation that we find Izzy and Fernan at the end of this episode, right? Like it, this episode one is, it tends to be like a, a gigantic sort of misunderstanding. But then when people do finally realize the truth that Izzy's energy is completely towards somebody else, I love the fact that you got somebody like a hobby that's just like, hey, have fun, sis, you know, um, even the idea of seeing like the other Rangers, you know, um, Ollie waving goodbye, uh, Amelia just like pleased at the uh, uh, amount of cuteness that she sees between Izzy and Fern, right? Zato just kind of smiling. I love the fact that it, it, it came across so casually uh, in the sense of like them really not making that big of a deal about it amongst everybody else like oh my god can you believe that i had no idea why didn't she tell me yada 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 it was just a case of like hey my sister is happy izzy's happy um case case closed you know what i mean um we, we found out who she truly cares about and we're not gonna make a big deal out of it it's absolutely normal and just absolutely fine and i thought they did a, a fantastic job uh in, in regards to that um I don't know what you're talking about, James. Uh, he says I, they did make a big, a big out of the situation. It was heavily forced. I honestly didn't feel like it was heavily forced at all. I mean, the, the idea here that we've got 
Izzy, who and Fern, who for the most part are actually relatively quiet. Like they literally don't say anything about their situation or anything like that towards one another, but they do play it up extremely well in regards to maybe some of the expressions that they give towards each other, right? The little smiles, um, um, the little awkward moments when we got Javi that kind of comes into play uh, to sit down for them and lunch, right? And then this starts becoming really awkward and they're looking at each other. Like you can tell that there's clearly some sort of energy there between these two characters. Uh, and the fact that... Um, um, they don't even really truly bring it up until the very end. I thought was was pretty good. Like for me, this was a, a an episode of seeing Javi just sort of continue to fumble over himself, or like continue to assume things and just pushing people into directions that they're not even really uh, ready for. Right? Like the fact that Javi uh, picks up on some things, I I can get it. Like I get the idea of Javi maybe picking up on, you know, how his sister's acting differently, right? Um, so he's definitely picking up on the idea that she likes somebody. Unfortunately, he just picks the wrong person. And the fact that Javi still goes up to Adrian in this episode, talks to him about his sister, but then is all of a sudden, like, even when it, Adrian mentions to him, well, you know, I haven't really thought about my, I haven't really thought about, um, Izzy in that way before like H Javi clearly was not listening to this man whatsoever like having clearly his own intentions wanting to go ahead and force this relationship between uh Adrian and Izzy and not really even listening to Adrian in the first place who doesn't even seem to be that interested in Izzy outside of the fact that listen we we're casual friends we work out together uh he even mentions the idea that it's like hey you know at the end of the day I don't really we don't really hang out outside of our training. This is this is how I know um, Izzy is from based off of what we do. So um, I, I thought it was really just comes down to the idea of Javi in this episode, really making him a bigger fool out of himself, I think, than even really putting emphasis on the Izzy and burn stuff that we wind up getting but i for me i i i can easily see it between izzy and fern like the the idea that amelia or i should say was it was it javi that asks the group in the beginning of the episode you know i thought that they were rivals when we first started this out and i think that certainly says something in regards to maybe why fern and izzy do work together listen two competitive people right um two people that clearly want to get better at what they do right we saw last week's episode them both joining up with the brand new gym in here there's clearly a lot in common that they have um them just being competitive being athletic being into the same hobbies i think definitely does certainly go a long way and while we definitely saw Izzy step up and help fern out um very early on in this season i think it was episode five or six um, clearly sending the message that, listen, I know that we're competitive and, you know, we want to face off against each other, but I'm still I'm still human and I'm still a, a pretty nice person and I have no problem in sort of helping you out. I can easily see that sort of growing their bond a little bit, getting the opportunity to see Izzy step up in the, the previous episode to become everybody's new uh, trainer and to see them continue that storyline in this episode uh, of Izzy now being stepping up to be the trainer for everybody else. Um, I, I got to think that that certainly not only allows Izzy and Fern to have more time together, but it probably shines a very sort of positive outlook on who Izzy is certainly as a person. So if there was any competitiveness between these two, I think we definitely have seen the actions of both these characters enough to understand maybe why they certainly would be interested in each other. So for me, I, I really enjoyed the idea of, of how they wind up handling this. Um, the idea, again, that they really allowed this episode to be more about Javi making an assumption and making an absolute fool of himself than really making it as a bigger picture of, ooh, these two are dating each other now until the very end. You know, like when you get the the hand the hand holding, the walking away. Um, I love the little shot at the very end where you get to see Izzy even put her sh her head on Fern's shoulder. Um, uh, again, I, th I thought they absolutely handled it. In a time period where I feel like the climate certainly is changing 
where there certainly will always be negative ass people that will feel some type of way about it. You know, whether that be parents that got kids that watch Nickelodeon that might feel maybe a little bit uncomfortable. I feel like for the most part, Simon Bennett and the writers did a really good job in really lightening the tone, adding some levity to this episode, some great action, especially in regards to the original footage, um, some great stuff when it comes to the Void Knight um, also at the very end. I, I thought they really handled it well to not necessarily push it in your face uh, or make it like a big so sort of social issue in a sense that they're just really letting Izzy sort of live her life and everybody else that supports her and is there for her just casually accepting everything instead of making a big deal about it. And I think that's certainly a fantastic way for it to certainly go. So um, listen, you can feel any type of way that you certainly want to. Um, but when we are talking about the idea of, of Dino Fury truly being a season of first, and we don't really even know where the Power Ranger franchise is certainly going to go from here. Um, this is a great season in order to do things that I think fans have really have always been wanting to see for a very long time in order, whether that be representation or just first in other other ways, too. Um, I think this is the time to go ahead and pull this trigger based off of a lot of the uncertainty as to what we certainly might get after Dino Fury, right? Uh, we may not get opportunities like this today, uh, 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 this again. So I really enjoyed it, and I thought they handled this episode really, really well, honestly. Um, let's see here. Um, a couple of technical aspects about this episode I really loved. I love the original fog footage that they wind up using. Um, I thought the idea of them being able to blend that along with the Sentai footage that they showcase actually worked out really well in here. And I even had um some great um uh, moments for mucus in this episode too. I thought this episode for me, you know, because of the fact that we've been doing like on not honorable mentions, but we've been doing um, like awards, if you will, for Dino Fury this season. Uh, we did um, some nominees, if you will, for the first half of season one. Uh, and we're definitely going to have some nominees for the second half of season one. This episode had quite a few nominees already added to it, whether that be um, a morphine sequence, I think, is up there. Best mucus moment um, is a moment that comes out of this episode. And a best void moment, I think, comes out of this episode to be added to the nominees of the list. Um, like for me, when it comes to the technical aspect, getting an opportunity to be, um, getting the opportunity to see how they did um the void knight scene where he throws the shield into mucus and like cuts him in half i thought that looked really well um even the idea of seeing slither fall down next to the pile of of goo that mucus is and the shot sort of pulls out a little bit as mucus begins to reform um and i don't know if it's a it, it looks like it's a very quick edit um, I don't know if that's an edit or just special effects or a combination of the two, but getting the opportunity to see Mucus reform back into his physical form, I thought actually looked really great um, on screen. So I don't know how they pulled that shot off, but it, it really worked well for me. But um, I, I just love the big sort of presentation that Slyther and Mucus give Void Knight at the end, thinking that they've got the Sporex, um, the Sporex taken from the Dino Charge, excuse me, Dino Charge from the Dino Fury Rangers, um, and getting just to see Void Knight's displeasure uh, in um, in being um, being um, joked around like that sort of thing. Even Void Knight in here clearly doesn't like to be mocked, not amazed by what Slyther wind up doing. I was not expecting him to certainly take off his helmet as soon as he certainly did. You know what I mean? Um, I was hoping, I don't want to say I was hoping, but I guess a part of me was expecting that's certainly going to be a mystery that's certainly pushed a little bit further down the road. Uh, but clearly they have intentions for Void Knight. Um, moments like this, just rethinking about how a real soldier handled Void Knight, um, getting to see his unfortunate demise very early on in this series, uh, in that uh, real soldier series, does make me curious as to where 
um, Void Knight's character goes after season two. Is there even a Void Knight after season two? Uh, or is there a new villain? Um, the fact that we've gotten his face reveal in here makes me think that we probably will be having some pretty big Void Knight moments before the end of season one. So I'm definitely here for it. Um, I do like the idea, like if we are going to show his face, I'm glad that it's not somebody that we've seen already in the show um that this certainly seems to be like a new character a new person um if you will um so if anything i i would be curious to see um his further relation to anybody else if that eventually happens right people have been theorizing maybe this is amelia's father or whatever the case may be We'll see if that theory certainly holds true um, by the end of this season or season two. But I, I am at least, I, I really at least appreciate the idea that Void Knight isn't somebody that we've certainly have seen already. So I, I, I do love that newness in that sense. Um, quick honorable mention. Two quick honorable mentions in here. Um, Blazing Dino Key winds up popping back up in here. We just saw it utilized by Amelia in episode number 11, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, um, the Haunted House episode um, that we saw. Uh, but this episode, it returns, and this time, Zato's the one utilizing it this time around. So I thought it was pretty cool to see uh, Zato utilizing the Blazing Dino Key. Uh, and then I got to say... <laughs> I, I am curious as to why they had our Power Rangers wearing disguises in this episode. You know, we get the great bargain between Slyther and our Rangers here. Adrian for the Sporex, if you will. Um, and we see the Black Ranger go down there with the Sporex. And for some reason, the rest of the Rangers are like, we should wear disguises so that they don't know who we are. And I'm assuming it's the case of maybe they just didn't want Adrian to know that they were Power Rangers. But I guess for me, the question that I have is if Javi's teleporting down there as the Black Ranger, you guys can't just teleport down there as the Rangers? Like in your like in your costumes already sort of thing, right? Like nobody's going to know it's you underneath the costumes. So why not just teleport right down there immediately when you're ready instead of like disguising yourself and looking a fool? Because like, why did they have my boy Zeta looking like Mrs. Doubtfire in this episode? Like, I mean, he had the whole mask on. He had the big suit on. Uh, homeboys rocking the socks and the 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 flip flops, not the flip flop, but the like the house slippers. I'm just thinking, like, why did they got Zeta looking like Mrs. Doubtfire in this episode for no good reason? Um, I, it may, definitely made it hilarious to me, and I think it even made it even better at the fact that they allowed it to be a pretty long roll call sort of morphing sequence. Also, um, so they definitely tried to make it a big deal, but it it did make me laugh. I didn't see the point of having to disguise it. Uh, disguise themselves when they could have just went down there as rangers in the first place but I'll, I'll give it to them i'll definitely go ahead and give it to them um it, it did make me chuckle and make me laugh regardless of how pointless it seemed to be but i i, I did enjoy what i wind up seeing but overall, I thought this episode was handled pretty well. Um, I was actually a really big fan of it. Getting to see Javi stick his mouth in the his uh, stick his foot in his mouth, Mister Oblivious over here, if you will. Um, it, just the awkwardness that he winds up providing for this episode really made me laugh. Of just how off base he certainly was. Um, but again, just getting to see the Izzy and Fern stuff, the subtleties between them, the the stares, the looks, the little smiles and stuff. Uh, I, I really appreciate how they wind up handling this episode. Listen, I know not everybody certainly is going to feel some type of way about it. It's a way that I certainly did. But I, I definitely do think that um, this episode was handled extremely well. Look, I, I, I will say this. Uh, JB says what says that was to trick Slither. I mean, I get the idea, but you can't just trick Slither by like, hey, here's here's um here's the Black Ranger thinking that everything was gonna go just fine, and then just as the meeting, you know, the swap's about to happen, boom, just pop in unexpectedly for Slither as the Power Rangers. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, I, I will say this. Before we wrap up this, the thoughts on in regards to this, you know, 
I know every I know some people are certainly going to feel some type of way about this particular episode, and I, I get that. But I will say this um, based off of just what Power Rangers has always um, pushed, whether that be inclusion or diversity, this is the same exact thing. Um, you know, you may have an issue with, you know, um, whatever. Maybe it's your own religious beliefs uh, that make you from fully wanting to accept this or feel comfortable with this or look at this as wrong. However you want to look at it, to me, this is no different from whether you're black, white, Asian, Indian, and you, you're allowing you're allowed to become a Power Ranger, right? Power Rangers has always included diversity ever since I was a kid, uh, making anybody that wants to be a Power Ranger certainly feel welcome. Um, the idea of being um, a, a color, uh, a religious belief, a sexual orientation shouldn't stop you from being a Power Ranger. Um, and I, I will just say this, and I feel like if 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 you feel some type of way about this. Um, and you feel like the idea of them representing the LGBT community is like all of a sudden too much of an idea of, of inclusion, then I, I just I just don't know what to tell you. You know, I, I just don't know what to tell you. Um, James, I, I don't know what you're smoking, my guy, but uh, I, I this has nothing to do with SJW politics. Um, this is definitely all diversity. I, if anything, James, I would recommend you please take some time to look at yourself in the mirror uh, and, and really ask yourself some questions and have a good sit down conversation with yourself as to why this truly makes you feel uncomfortable about it. Um, this is the same thing that it's always been since growing up as a kid um, in the sense of inclusion is important. Representation is important. Um, seeing yourself on the big screen or on the small screen to let you know that as a human being, you can achieve and do whatever you want to in your life and be successful and be happy, that goes a long way. For every little boy, for every little girl, uh, for every teenager that doesn't feel comfortable in their own skin, for every adult that still hasn't come out because of the pushback and the negativity that some people out there in the world provide for them, um, this is important moments for those people. You may not necessarily feel that way. You may not necessarily fully understand or connect, but this does mean something to some people. Um, and whether or not you agree with it or not, whether or not you support it or not, I, I think we should certainly at least be happy that some people at least feel represented. Um, and if if you have some type of way about that, maybe Power Ranger just isn't for you. If, if you have an issue with diversity and inclusion and people getting opportunities, maybe maybe Power Rangers as a fandom just is not for you uh, in regards to the franchise and certainly what it represents. You can certainly feel uncomfortable about it all you want to, um, but it does affect other people. It does. Th this is big for other people, even if you don't necessarily want to admit it. Um, and so for me, at the end of the day, I, I, I like reality. I like being able to know that the shows that I live, that I, that I watch represent what happens when I walk out of my doors. Granted, this stuff is all fantasy and sci-fi and action and adventure and things like that. But I do think that it is important that there are people in this world that do not feel included. And for Power Rangers to take that moment and opportunity to make everybody certainly feel welcome, even though clearly people in the Power Ranger fandom are not welcoming to people, you really should look yourself in the mirror and figure out why you're a Power Ranger fan to begin with. Uh, because I, I do think that if anything, this Power Rangers has always represented everybody. And if you have a problem with everybody being represented, then I think it says something. I definitely do think that it says something. Um, I, I don't see this as forced. I think if anything, this is something that's provided us with something new. Uh, we have not seen this in 28 years of Power Rangers. Um, so the idea that this seems forced all of a sudden, uh, I think you're smoking that culture war bullshit too much, my guy. Uh, so if anything, um, it is what it is, guys. People are not, not everybody's going to be happy. And, and that's certainly more than, than fine. Um, but, uh, it, it is what it is and it's here guys. That's why I'm saying it. JB says it, it's fictional guys. It's fictional. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
So, yeah, you can lose sleep over it, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'm happy, if anything, Izzy and ha has, in fact, been represented. Um, clearly a character who is rather unique amongst herself. Uh, I have truly have loved Izzy's personality, how she t tackles things, her morals, her values, the way that she handles herself calling people out that have certainly doing other people wrong. Um, I think if Izzy hasn't shown you the type of per, I feel like if anything, Izzy has shown you the type of person that she certainly is. Um, and I think because of that, it should, you know, I, I think she's definitely is uh, certainly made a case for sure. Um, <laughs> Power Rangers ready going back to um going back to um Coach Bella. It says, can't just say Coach Bella was hot in episode 12. <laughs> I hear you, man. I absolutely hear you. But listen, overall, man, I really love this episode. I thought this was a really enjoyable one for the most part. Um, you know, putting on blinders to all the negativity out there again. Uh, I thought the Izzy and Fern stuff was handled great. Uh, for me, it's it's great to see those two ladies finally happy. Um, Javi getting the opportunity to, to learn a little bit more about his sister. If anything, I do, I would like to see. I would be curious to see if Fern and Izzy get any more showcase in this season as it progresses. I think they've done a really good job of at least establishing some some supporting characters like Adrian and things like that. Whether or not they continue to utilize them for the remainder of the season, I hope they do because I I do like the inclusion of Adrian and Fern in here and the fact that they are really continuing along with the storylines that they're setting up very early on in this season. But um, yeah, man, uh, diversity, inclusion, representation. It's certainly all important. Uh, and for those of you who certainly do support it, listen, I know it's not going to make everybody happy. Clearly, every, some people are going to be uncomfortable about it. But it is what it is. That's just life. Um, so people are just going to have to deal with it. But um, listen, guys, at the end of the day, I want to know your thoughts. Um, what are some of the pros, some of the cons, some of the things that you love, some of the things that you didn't about this episode? Let your thoughts be known in the live chat or the comment section box below, ladies and gentlemen.